and uh, let's go ahead. We'll have a word of prayer, and then we're going to turn it over to the children. All right, let's bow together, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity for us to be here together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the boys and girls and the uh, adults that have worked with them and all the hard work and the labor and the practice uh, that has gone into this night. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help each one of them to do well, to remember their lines and their parts, and that the true message of their play and the true meaning of Christmas will come through to all of us as they put on their play this evening. Lord, may your hand be upon this time. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Christmas is a very special time of the year for the Christian. It is when we remember the miraculous birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We remember... We remember the night the angel and the angels announced his birth to frighten shepherds. We imagine the lowly stable where baby Jesus lay in a manger while Joseph and Mary watched over him. Later, the wise men were led by a brilliant shining light to worship the Christ child. Christmas, the story of Christmas brings hope to a world that is lost.
but not everyone knows the meaning of Christmas. Tonight, we want to begin with a view of Christmas. With all Christmas, the com commercials of Christmas that many are caught up in, and then plain ten symbols of Christmas that keep our minds centered on Jesus Christ, the real reason we celebrate Christmas. We, we will begin with what is Christmas. An evergreen tree has a very appropriate name. It is evergreen, always green. It does not become dormant in the winter as other green trees do. The color green represents new life in Jesus Christ. And the needles of the evergreen tree always point upward towards heaven. We should be as the evergreen tree, always full of life, never becoming dormant in our lives with Jesus Christ as our arms are lifted he heavenward. John 6, 33. For the bread of man is he which cometh down from heaven 
and giveth life unto all the world. Ornaments are used to decorate Christmas trees each and every year. People look for the perfect one to fit on their Christmas tree. Our Christmas trees just wouldn't seem complete without our ornaments. Ornaments symbolize the blessings that are in our lives. Our lives just wouldn't seem complete without blessings. Everything that we have is due to God loving us so much that he showers us with his blessings. Our lives just wouldn't seem complete without our blessings. Er just that our ornaments are all, all different shapes and size, blessings are all different as well. God picks and chooses each or each blessing so it will be it'll be just right. The next time you decorate your tree and as you put up each ornament, think of a blessing. I'll think you run out of ornaments before you run out of blessings. Every man shall give in as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God which has given thee. Deuteronomy sixteen seventeen. White and candles are used to give light. When a room is full of darkness, it is dark. But if you light only one single match in the room, it is, it is light. But there may be more darkness in the room, but the light overpowers it. We are that light. We must... We can be a single light in a world of darkness. We must share our light with others so that the light increases and the world decreases. You are the light of the world. Ye are ye are the light of the world. A city on a set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men 
light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick, and it giveth light to unto all that is in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
The bells ring joyful at Christmas to send out the good news that Jesus is born, the Savior of the world. Church bells ring proclaiming his birth, and Emmanuel guards with us, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. A candy cane symbolizes multiple things. If you hold it upright, it looks like a shepherd's crook. The shepherds were some of the few people who were able to see Jesus in the stable at the, in the stable at Bethlehem. Ham. If you hold it upside down, J. Jesus starts with the letter J.
The, co the color white represents purity for Jesus. The red represents the blood he shed for us on the cross. Some candy canes have three small red stripes. These three red stripes represent God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Who knew that this simple, delicious candy could symbolize so, so many things? And she shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew one twenty one. The star is a heavenly sign, a heavenly sign of prophecy fulfilled ages ago, the, the shining hope for all mankind. The star led the wise men to find baby Jesus. These wise men traveled many miles following a star in the sky. The star was their guiding light to the Savior. God was the wise men's traveling agent in sorts, leading them to the greatest destination known to all men, the Savior. We have his word as our guiding light to lead us to be with him in heaven. Are you going to follow him? Matthew 2, 9, B, 10. And lo, the star which came, in, came so they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood where the young child was. When they saw this star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy.
imagine you are a lowly shepherd watching over your sheep. This night seems no different than any other. Then all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord is in the sky above telling you, above you telling you of the Savior's birth. You a shepherd? Why did God send an angel? Why did God send an angel to tell shepherds? Because the message that God had about the birth was of Jesus was for all people, not just for the right, not just for the Jew. Everyone. God chose his number one messenger to tell the lowest of people in the world's eyes of his son's birth. God looks at the heart, not what the world looks at. Thank goodness. And while the angel of the Lord came upon them and and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I, br I bring you good tidings of joy, of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. We see Holly as a decoration during the Christmas season, but do we really understand what Holly stands for? The leaves represent the crown of thorns placed upon Jesus' head when he was being crucified. The very sin of the blood that he shed for us. He is a crucifixion, pain, and abandonment, all for you and I. The next time you see a decoration with Holly on it, remember what was done for you, so he that he can spend eternity with you. I know that I will. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put on upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and bowed a knee before him, and walked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Matthew 27, 29.
From his throne, Jesus came, laid aside heaven's fame, in exchange for the cross of Calvary. For my gain, suffered loss, for my sin, he bore the cross, he was wounded that I The leaf has its evergreen branches bent in a circle so that the ends touch, touch, having no beginning or end. Just as there is no beginning or end of Jesus' internal love for us, just as the leaf looks the same throughout and seems to not change, so he will always be the same. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8.
These days, the world has forgotten the reason of Christmas. Most people seem to think that getting presents is the greatest thing about Christmas. Other people seem to think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they're both wrong. These wise men came to visit Jesus as a young child and gave him presents. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They offered him gold hold as a king, paying him tribute. Frankincense as God, for they honored God with the smoke of him. And myrrh as a man that should die, for myrrh was used in embalming dead bodies. These men, these wise men, saw the child and knew that he is a king, is God. Is God and that he would die for the sin of the world. How can any man, anyone with the knowledge that we have now not believe? And when they came where the, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they put presents unto him, gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Matthew two eleven.
you for coming tonight. You all worked very hard. We hope you see a true meaning of Christmas. John 3, 16. For, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so whoever believes him should not perish, so everlasting life. Outstanding job, wasn't it? That was, uh, yeah, you can give them another hand. That's fine. That's great. Great job. That was a, that was a huge undertaking, and you did a great job with that. I want to uh, thank a few folks. Uh, we appreciate uh, with the costumes, uh, Brenda Mann, and uh, the good job she did with that, and uh, getting everybody outfitted, and then uh, the construction of the scenes and such, uh, the backdrop, and of course the the uh, board over the baptistry, so they don't all fall in, and uh, <laughs> brother, the lighting and everything. Brother Bob Reed did l most of the work with that, and we appreciate brother Bob. And then of course these ladies who work with the children, uh, they did all this working on Wednesday evenings. Basically, they had one practice yesterday in here, and uh, all the other time was done on Wednesday nights, and they put it all together. And, of course, uh, Felicia and Kathy with the older kids and Tanya and Jackie uh, with the younger ones. And uh, they did a great job. And parents, obviously, you worked with your children and uh, helping them to memorize their parts. And we appreciate your help as well. Thank you so much. And uh, great job, kids. Now, hey, listen, go ahead. Give them a hand one more time, all right? And thank you, workers. Thank you.
You did a great job. We are going to take uh, just about 10 minutes if we can. We got to just uh, get them changed and uh, ready for church and get this straightened up up here and ready for the church service. And uh, about 10 minutes, about 5 till 7, we'll plan to start our evening service. All right? Take time and. Uh,